Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm your host for today's episode. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome in Dr. Gustavo Machado, uh, Assistant Professor at North Carolina State University, to join us for today's episode. Dr. Machado, welcome to the podcast. In case there are uh, any folks out there who have not had the pleasure of, of meeting you, please give the audience a brief introduction. Sounds good. Thanks so much for the invitation, Clayton. Yeah, my name is Gustavo Machado. I'm here at NC State. Um, yeah, we work uh, a lot with the with biosecurity, swine biosecurity, and we really focus on trying to understand how disease spread between farms. So it's our core um, uh, skills here and at, at NC State. So yeah, thank you for the invitation. Well, biosecurity is obviously a, a point of discussion always on producers' mind, um, whether it's for biosecurity against domestic diseases or biosecurity against foreign animal diseases. You can't go to an industry meeting without being showered with biosecurity information and questions. Um, I know your group, uh, Dr. Machado, has really worked hard on trying to um, help producers get their biosecurity information and their biosecurity risks organized in a manner in which we can kind of uh, communicate effectively with each other. Um, that's been a, a bit a long journey that your lab has been working on. Do you want to kind of give us a little background on that journey, right? Uh, the the RAB app uh, program, wh where did it begin and, and where's it at now and where's it going to go tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Well, great. Yeah. Um, so we, we started working with the scoop for, uh, uh, for supply plan, which is basically a volunteer program that uh, is not only for pigs, it's also for uh, cattle, small ruminants, and, and the poultry side. So it's a voluntary program, and the, the enhanced biosecurity plan that comes with, this, with the SPS plan, as we call the acronym for that, um, has a written part of the plan and a map part of the plan. Um, so it is, it is uh, extensive and it is a plan that uh, would be in effect when we do have foreign disease declared in the country. So, um, so that's one thing. So there was a need for that two years ago with some companies trying to put that together, you know, in a paper format and all that. And we quickly figured out that we need to do something more automatized and automatize and something more electronically. So that's why we created RABAP, which stands for Rapid Access Biosecurity, which is actually a web application um, that uh, help producers and, and companies to standardize their plans in a way that is easier to manage and becomes available to the state and health officials for them to sign off at the end of the day. So. The SPS plan is one thing, you know, there is other acronyms out there, US SHIP, which uh, utilize uh, now as, as the past resolution has been approved, that SPS plan with part of the US SHIP as part of the biosecurity part of things, but they are completely different. There are different things uh, that go on, uh, you know, in those two programs. So Scrubber's pipeline, biosecurity and farm level, U.S. SHIP in, in, uh, includes traceability, surveillance, and biosecurity. So there are many things in there. And one of the, the things is having a biosecurity plan that is accessible for the animals officials within 24 hours of uh, for the animals event. Yeah. So yeah, we started two years ago. We've been uh, rolling out versions uh, for our app and uh, many things emerged you know, through that time. We learned a lot, a lot of lessons. Um, especially in the process on collecting, processing, and approving those plans. It's time consuming, but if it's done correctly, then you know later on we can manage that much easier. So at today, we have about 10,000 of those plans completed. We have 17 states, 17 uh, uh, animals officials offices in 17 states that are uh, signing in for the agreements to protect the data and they have access to data because of that and 55 companies throughout the country as well that are working uh, with us, either completed or in the mix to have those plans standardized. The way that we operate is instead of um, just working in the states that have signed agreements uh, you know, to utilize the web application, which is RAV app, we, we standardize whole company so then you know, added value to the company and to the producers so then a plan that you see in Iowa, for example, looks exactly 
as it looks like in Oklahoma. So if we need to utilize them to make decisions in the future, um, you know, they can, they are, they went through the same process. So harmonizing that data collection, but also harmonizing processing and harmonizing the verification of that electronically at the uh, state office is what we are really focused on. And we were moving along. We, we still have 10,000 uh, sites. Uh, we estimate that we need to do 23,000 commercial sites in the U.S. So we still, you know, I envision another year and a half here to get them to those plans. So that's what we are looking for in the future. So the 10,000 number, Gustavo, is 10,000 that are in the RAB app specifically, or that, that is the total um, uh, secure pork supply volume of plans? That's in the, in the RAB app right now, uh, today. Excellent. So 10,000 sites that have mm -hmm. biosecurity plans that are electronically available in a consistent format for state animal health officials to pull up in the immediate aftermath of a, an FMD identification or, uh, you know, God forbid, African swine fever or something like that. That's that's powerful. And I think if you're a producer out there who, um, you know, doesn't have these these secure pork supply plans done, Think about that for a second. There, there are 10,000 sites who have gotten this done. Um, there are 10,000 friends out there who can help direct you towards the tools that are available. Well, I used to work for the Mashoffs, Gustavo, and Wayne Mashoff always had a saying, uh, two heads are better than one, even if one is a head of cabbage. And so <laughs> collaboration is absolutely the way that we tackle these big problems. Let's talk about the SHIP program now. So we moved away from secure pork supply and now to the swine health improvement program. As I understand it, you guys are engaging with SHIP on some of the truck movement data. Can you talk to us a little bit about that part of the project? Mm -hmm. So so also within RABAP, we, and we also work in collaboration with National Pork Board, uh, with Patrick Poev and others with the AgView platform as well. So we, we, we work with the movement of big semen and trucks. Uh, and, and we work around the data that producers have and the companies have. So we call around that to understand there is a, is a bottleneck on there. And, and we call around it. It takes time, but we, we, we call around it to process the data, check for the quality of the data, and make sure we prepare the connection between the farms. So in order to do traceability, you need to know the source and destination. Yeah. And you want to know how many pigs went. It was pigs, semen, or trucks. So. We work on that. That's, you know, our research, our focus on disease transmission and the movement of, of pigs, semen, trucks is a huge on distribution of, of pores and PED. Um, you know, not talk about ASF, but uh, has been shown as well. The routes, those routes have a huge contribution on transmission. So we, we've been working now with, with that, with, with, the, with that data sets. And we have data from the whole country as well on that and some publications coming out, but that's that's what we are seeing now, and this is thank you, of course, to the collaboration with the industry and and the interest on looking at that information. So, very good. Well, it's it, it's a critical project. It's it's two critical projects that you've taken on for the industry, um, and I certainly want to thank you and your team for that, Gustavo. Um, I really appreciate you coming on the show and, and sharing that information. And, and to our audience, thank you very much for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. If you have not visited our website, please do so. Uh, check us out at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so that you don't miss not only more good work from Gustavo and his team, but all of our wonderful guests that we have on every Friday. Thank you very much for listening. And please have a great rest of your day. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com. And we would love to take a look at your research. Mm -hmm.